Let's take a look at finding the domain of square root functions. When we're working with square roots, remember that if we get a negative number inside the square root, that's a problem. So what we need to do is limit the domain to what's going to yield a positive or zero in under that square root. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at what is under the square root and we're going to set that greater than or equal to zero and then we'll solve that inequality and that will tell us exactly what we can put in for our x values in that square root in that uh, function. So let's take a look at this first one. Right here we have the square root of x and I'm going to set that up as an inequality so it's going to be x is greater than or equal to zero. Well that makes sense because I can put anything in here that's zero or larger and that will work out that will yield a result okay so that one's pretty straightforward let's take a look at this one well what we're gonna do is look under the square root here and look for what we need to make sure is positive well this piece right here so 8 plus x is greater than oopsie 8 plus x oh there it is is greater than or equal to 0 okay so I'm gonna solve that for x so minus 8 minus 8 and we get x is greater than or equal to negative 8 and you might say well wait a minute we can't put negative stuff under square roots well what happens if we do it's greater than or equal to negative 8 if we put that in 8 plus negative 8 would be 0 square root of 0 we can do that well let's go a little bit bigger how about negative 7 8 plus negative 7 is basically 8 minus 7 which would be 1 we can take the square root of that that's fine okay so sometimes it's easy to fall into oh we just can't use any negative numbers and that's not necessarily true so be careful okay let's take a look at this next one here again we've got to make sure that what is under the square root does not become negative so I'm gonna set this thing and say that that is greater than or equal to zero because that would be the non-negative stuff and what I can do to solve this I could either distribute that two through or I can just divide by two on both sides that's gonna give me x minus five is greater than or equal to two or excuse me zero holy smokes zero divided by two is zero still and then plus five plus five so we get x is greater than or equal to 5. So what that's saying is anything 5 and larger is okay. So let's just try that to double check. So we put in 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Square root of 0. We can do that. That's just 0. Bigger than 5? Well, 6. How about that? 6 minus 5? That's 1. 2 times 1? 2. Square root of 2? We can take that. Let's go smaller than 5 though. Hmm. 4. 4 minus 5 would be negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Uh-oh. Square root of negative 2 can't do that. So we see how we come up with this value in which we need to limit the domain to that. Let's take a look at this one. Here we have negative 3x. And again, I'm going to start by setting that greater than or equal to 0. Set up that inequality then we need to solve that now divide by negative three want to get that x by itself divide by negative three here I'm left with x zero divided by negative three is zero but what happens when we divide by a negative in an inequality ah the inequality flips so remember we get this the greater than becomes less than the greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to why is that important? Well, notice x is less than or equal to 0. So if we put in 0, that's fine. We get 0 squared to 0. We can do that. But less than 0, well, that would be like negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 would be positive 3, which we can take the square root of. So it makes sense that we can only put in 0 or negative values here because that's the only way this is going to become positive since that's sitting there negative we've got to multiply by a negative to get the positive if 
you need to find the domain of square root functions. Remember, what we want to do is make sure whatever's under the square root is positive. And to do that, we can set that e in an inequality. I always want to say equal to. In an inequality where the thing under the square root is greater than or equal to zero. Solve that inequality. Don't forget the rules with inequalities, especially if we multiply or divide by a negative. Remember, that flips the inequality, and then we get our domain. And we played around here to see how those domains actually do make sense and work. Hopefully this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math, and I know you can do anything you put your mind to.